Hello everyone, welcome to the third episode of our series on creating parallax and scrolling effects. So in the previous two tutorials, uh, we created two different types of parallaxes. Uh, initially, the first one was using CSS solely, and the second one was using a little bit of a JavaScript to create a very cool scroll effect. If you haven't watched those tutorials, uh, please go ahead and do. Um, today I'm gonna show you another kind of cool trick that you can use to have some sort of an effect based on the scroll amount that you have in the page. So I went ahead and created this uh, sort of interface page uh, to be able to tell you the different types of parallaxes so far that I came up with and in this tutorial, we're going to build one of the effects and then in the upcoming tutorials, we're going to follow up and build all of them. And ultimately, we build this website and maybe even we build it much cooler than what it looks right now. So here, if I go ahead and refresh the page, notice here we have one element over here. We have another element over here. If I refresh the page, you will see the two animations that happen, right? So this first animation and then the second animation. And if I go ahead and scroll down, take a look at this kind of box that starts rotating based on my scroll amount, right? So that's the another cool thing uh, that you can do. The other cool thing is if I start scrolling down, take a look at this area. As soon as I scroll a little bit further down, you'll see that we have this cool animation these elements translate up and also take a look at here the image will zoom in as well right and if i scroll a little bit further down we have this kind of box over here that is scrolls on the different speed of the page if you notice if i scroll up and down you will see that it actually scrolls as a different paste in the page so today we're going to be trying to build the effect of this Basically, the concept that you can build this kind of uh, effect that you have here. And also, the same effect happens down here for these two elements. So let's get started. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please go ahead and do and click on the bell icon to get notified for the upcoming tutorials. And we're going to be obviously the best YouTube channel for the front end tips. Thank you, everyone, for your support. Now let's get started. So as I always do, I go to kotus.com frontend in our online code editor. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a container, right? And within the container, I'm going to add two sections, right? For now, section one and then section two, right? And I would go to CSS, make sure that the sections are, for example, uh, the height of them are 100 VH, meaning that the full height of the window. So just to show you what I mean, if I add one here and two here, since we set the height to 100, we have we see the one here. And now if I scroll down, then we see two here. So the height of each section is the height of the window, right? So now inside each, I'm going to add a div, which represents our image, right? So I'm going to to sort of name it IMG. Uh, copying this, pasting it in another section here. So now what am I going to do is uh, I will actually go ahead in the tutorials for yesterday and take these two images. Um, let's take the first one. So I'm going to copy this background image URL that I took from Google and I'm going to come back here and since I know that the image is within the section, the first section of the container, I can easily do this section and then nth child one. So the first one and then div with class IMG, I'm just going to paste that. So this is going to be our first one, but obviously I need to add some width and height to it. So let's give the width of uh, let's say 90% and then height of uh, 400 pixel, right? So we can see our image right over here. Um, the next thing I would like to do is give it this, give this a little bit of a border like 10 pixel um, solid and white. 
and then give a box shadow to make it a little bit nicer. So zero, zero, maybe 10 pixel radius, and then RGBA zero, zero, zero for black, and then 0 0.2, right? So now we have a little bit of a shadow as you can see here. Um, so I can also set the margin to be, uh, let's say 400 pixel and auto, so that it kind of gets centered in the page. Looks good. Uh, now I can do the same thing for the second div with image. I know that the section in its parent is the second section. As you can see, the second, uh, sorry, the second child of its parent. And then I take the class div with the class IMG over here. Going back to the tutorial we had yesterday, I'm going to copy the second image, right? So here I can paste this uh, over here. I hope I just copied the image. No, I didn't. So I'm going to paste it over here. So now if I scroll down, you'll see that the second image is literally in the second page, right? So now since all of these two, all of these uh, styles are the same for both of these, I'm going to copy this. And also I just add a class div img and then paste those over here right so we're not gonna duplicate code here in our css so now we have this the next thing i want to do is to make sure that the background position on the divs with the img class which contains our images as a background image has background position center right so now they're centered as you can see, but also I want to make sure that the background size is something like 120%. Uh, so usually we have 100%, which contains almost all the image in the page, but I'm gonna make it 120 pixel bigger because we're gonna make this effect that you see here. So if I refresh, you'll see that there is this kind of nice effect that happens over here so now going back here what i want to do is add a class that reveals uh, the animation that we want to do so when i talked about different types of you know effects that we can do based on the scroll amount one is this one which really the uh, sort of styles that it gets the animation that it gets or the transition is based on the scroll amount that we have in the page, right? So if I scroll it like this, the amount that this changes, and obviously the amount of the transform property of it is changing, is based on the scroll amount. But what happens here is just a one-time thing. It's just an animation that runs and it has a specific duration. So we can't control the timing of it or anything based on the scroll amount, right? So if I do this, this is one time thing. If I scroll down, this is also one time thing. And if I go up, you see that the effect doesn't happen again. But this one, on the other hand, is actually completely based on the amount of scroll that I have in the page. So today we're gonna take a look at this. So here, now what am I gonna do is create a um, animation. So I'm just going to use keyframes and then I'm going to call it scale down. Uh, so initially, I want to make sure that these images have opacity zero, right? So we don't see them initially. None of the things that we don't see them initially. Now, when we define animations in CSS, we obviously can define like this, from and to, or also instead of this, we can use, you know, 0% and then 100% and within these brackets, we can define the dif different properties that we want to change. But since initially we have the properties set that we want, I just need to say two. The from will be taken from the uh, sort of styles that we have here. Now for the two, I'm just gonna make sure that the background size is 100% and opacity will become one, right? As easy as that so if I just just want to show you what happens if I now just add this as animation so animation scale down and two seconds now you should be able to let me save this you should be able to see that uh, let me just go back see if I wrote everything correctly we have keyframes scale down two. we have background size 100% and opacity one 
and we have animation scale down obviously we can't just set it like this because i applied it to the main element but if i say from and then in the from i just set opacity to zero and background size to 100 percent now i expect this animation to happen so we have scale down scale down just making sure that everything is right and i'm going to remove this so now if i refresh um let's see what is it key oh sorry it should be keyframes so now you can see that we have this cool animation right but what happens is that so if i go back again and remove the from since we don't need it right now and make sure that this is keyframes instead of keyframe now you can see the cool animation that happens right so the next thing that happens is that if you notice when the animation gets finished it goes back to initial state which is opacity 0 and background size 120 to be able to make sure that when our animation finishes it stops at the ending state we need to set animation fill mode to be forwards right forwards now if i refresh you'll see that when the animation stops even the animation finishes the animation stops at the last step here so this was just to show you how to create the effect now what we want to do is remove this from here and define a new class on top of div dot image let's call it show or let's call it reveal and then i'll paste those two styles over here the animation and then the fill mode now what i would like to do is to basically add this reveal class to the divs with the class img using javascript right so in my javascript i'm going to create a constant images and then i would say document query selector all and then here i just say img since i know that in my html i gave them class img right so now what we want to do we want to work with the scrolling and in order to do that i can just do window dot add event listener and then i can do scroll uh, and then i will pass a function let's do it es6 the newer version of javascript so i'm just going to do this which is called arrow functions and here i would create a constant called scroll top we did it in the previous tutorial as well and i store store window dot scroll y right so now if i start scrolling the amount of scroll that we have will be stored in this constant right which is great now the next thing i want to do is that i want to loop over these images so i can say images dot for each and then img or let's just say image so now for each of those images i want to make i want to check if scroll top plus scroll top is basically the top of the screen at any given time we scroll down right so right now the top of the screen is probably bigger obviously bigger than when it was initially up here so scroll top plus window dot inner height basically height of the window if this amount is bigger than now we have the image here is bigger than image dot offset top which is the top of the image plus its height so image offset height which means that when we are scrolling down we will loop over all the images that we have and if the, the scroll top or the amount of scroll plus the height of the window is more than the image dot offset top the top of the image plus its height and which, which means that this basically checks if our image is within the window right then i would like to add the class that de defined in this uh, css basically adding reveal so now here i can just say um, image dot class list dot add reveal right as easy as that so now we have one problem though right now the first image which initially has opacity zero is already 
within this, right? Is already within this limit that we defined here within the window. The problem is that this effect will happen only when we start scrolling. So if I start scrolling right now, you'll see that the effect happens. But initially, there will be nothing. So we have to fix this. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to create a function called reveal image, right? Reveal images. And then this will basically contain this for loop over here, right? Here. And I'm going to paste it over here. So it's going to be as easy as calling this function here, reveal images. But now if you notice when we copy this part and move it out, we can see that we we don't have scroll top within the scope of this image. So we have to pass it over here. So I can just pass it scroll top over here from the event handler that we have. And also I can put scroll top over here so that now if I just call this function reveal images, with the scroll top zero because initially the scroll top value will be zero so if i call this now you will see that it will without us scrolling down it will start showing our animation which is actually a pretty cool animation by the way now if i go ahead and scroll down until the end of the second page you'll see that still it doesn't even though the image probably is here it still doesn't show it but now when the amount of a scroll plus the height of the window passes this limit, it starts showing it again, right? So now we have this cool effect. If I scroll down, you'll see that now we get the second effect. So you could see that we can easily create pretty cool animations based on the scroll effect. Again, the important thing is that since this is one type of kind of effect that we can do using scrolling, uh, we use the animation here. As you can see, we created a class and depending on the position of the scroll bar, uh, we basically apply that class to that sort of image. This, unfortunately, this is the amount that we have set as the duration. And this is not basically, none of these are controllable in JavaScript. So this is a one-time thing that happens. So we're going to have this. And then if we scroll down, we're going to have the second one. And that's about it right? We're not going to have, so you probably have noticed this in many websites. And this is a pretty cool effect, by the way. So if you notice, for example, uh, the website that was the inspiration. So for example, container.com, you'll see that when it starts loading, there was this animation over here, but that was just one time animation. So if I scroll down, scroll up again, you'll see that it doesn't show. And if I scroll down, take a look at here, for example, we're going to have another one of those animations that happen, but that's about it. So it's not going to change anymore. But this one, since it's not an animation and we're going to tackle this in the next tutorial, you can see that this really changes based on the amount of scroll that we have here. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, you can do many cool effects with this. This, is, this was one of them. You can add different types of animation, of course. So, for example, in this example, we have this. We have this, for example. When we scroll down, the text that comes here is also using the same technique. Uh, so, in the next tutorial, we're going to dive into uh, moving elements based on the scroll amount themselves. So, in the next tutorial, we're not going to use animations, but we directly manipulate the properties from JavaScript. And also in the upcoming tutorial, we talk about these other cool parallax effect that has different movements based on the sort of the amount of scroll that we have in the page, right? So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please like and share this tutorial and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And stay tuned. I guess like by Monday or Tuesday next week, we're going to create this page and even much cooler than this page um, and i promise you we're going to make the best uh, sort of series on parallax effect and we're going to tackle many many different parallax effects that we can think of so i hope you enjoyed it and i wish you a great day and night and goodbye